Well, we are not in Kansas anymore, folks. <laughs> it's official. The cat is out of the bag. I have moved to the great state of New Mexico, and I think I'm obligated by YouTube content creator standards to insert a cheeky travel montage right now. And the obligatory travel montage is out of the way. And before we jump down to the very first spot here in New Mexico, I gotta just say to all my OG subs, to all my Driftless and, and Midwest folk in general, thank you so much. This last year has been pretty insane and developing this relationship between the audience and even building an audience has been so surreal for me and I, I have nothing but y'all to thank. So I really hope to see you around still in the comments, still on the Instagram, and all over the Discord because I'm not gone from the Driftless. I may be away, but I'm coming back. So I need boots on the ground. I need the perspective. I got to hear what's going on for the next time I make my way back up north. So with that being said, again, thank you guys so much. It, it means the world, and I hope you stick around for the future adventures to come. All right, enough talking. I've been driving all day. Let's get down to the creek. We've made it to the creek, and I didn't realize it was this tiny. We might not be here long. I'm gonna give it a couple runs and see, but this is uh, what's called Jack's Creek. I guess it's a feeder to the Pecos. Fingers crossed there might be some Rio Grande Cutthroat in here. That'd be pretty cool. Well, lessons learned. Jack's Fork. Little bit tiny and pretty choked with stuff, so I'm not gonna not gonna beat my head against the wall. I'm gonna double back, maybe go lower in the watershed. Let's find the Pecos and see what uh, see what's biting there. What are they biting on? Ma'am? Ma'am, what? Oh, right. Did we just throw in two travel montages? You bet your ass we did. We're finally hitting some bigger water. This is called the Pecos. And the Pecos is one of the bigger bodies of water that comes out of the Pecos wilderness. And that's where we were fishing earlier, the, the tributary. So, fingers crossed there's some, <laughs> some fish in here. We had our first bite, nothing else in that run. It's a good sign at least, it's pretty close to the parking lot. But if we keep going upstream, there might be a couple more. Who knows, let's see. Yes! Yes! No! No skunks today, yes! It almost seems fitting that our first fish here in New Mexico would be a little brownie brown. What a beauty. Oh my gosh. Check out his adipose. Yeah. That's a dimey Pecos brown right there. <laughs> Give you one last snaky look at him, and we're gonna get him back. He's uh he's a skinny boy. That feels so good. Little brownie boy, but it doesn't matter. I've been driving all day. I am tired, dead, just behind the eyes. But that lit me right up. That was a fantastic little brown. Real quick, I've got something very, very special. Not only was that our first fish here on the Pecos and here in New Mexico, but it was our first fish on a brand new rod of mine. I haven't shown you all yet. Let's take a look. This pretty little number is called the fire ant. 
This is from an awesome company out of Minnesota doing some pretty sweet custom rods. This is one of two in their arsenal. I've got the other one over there. Haven't caught a fish on it, so I don't want to debut it just yet. However, I will say my favorite part of catching a fish, catching the first fish on a new rod is taking off this stupid plastic liner. We've christened it and we can move on and fill it up with fish slime. So let's get this, let's get this plastic off ASAP. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. <laughs> well, big free fat shout out to Ant. This thing is a sexy little number and casts like butter. So let's see if there's any more butter in there. <laughs> Maybe a couple more browns. Well, it looks like he got that copper J right where it's supposed to be. Another little, little brownie boy. It's funny, you leave the driftless just to find some more browns. Gotta love it, right? <laughs> cool. Let's get him back in the drink. Alrighty, this might have to be our last spot. I am whooped. 4 a.m. got out on the road and it's been a it's been a long day for old Mikey. <laughs> but we're still trying to at least get a couple more fish and hike down this uh, this bomb of a hill and pff, try not to die. So let's get after it. Well, that was high risk, low reward. As I'm chilling on this big old log trying to catch my breath, the altitude is kicking my ass. I'll, I'll get adjusted soon, I'm sure. But the mental strain of getting up at 4 a.m. and driving halfway across the country, boy howdy, it is catching up. So I think I'm gonna call it there. No point in, no point in grinding any more than we need to. The first date with the Pecos, a little rough. It was a little rocky. I think, I think we've kind of got a pattern figured out. And, Hopefully in the future, the next time we meet, it'll go a little bit better. But I just gotta say again, all you folks out there, Midwest, Southwest, wherever you're at, I appreciate your support so much. And I hope you stick with as I'm, you know, gonna be in this kind of transition period, trying to figure out a brand new piece of land and water and all the fish that swim in it. It's might be a little rough, but I'm, I'm so excited. And I, I hope you're excited too, cause it's, uh, yeah, it's moving and shaking, things are happening. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make lemonade out of lemons, I suppose. But yeah, as always, folks, make sure to... No, oh, man, I didn't even think of this. I'm usually like, oh, whatever you're in the drip was. <laughs> Whenever you're in the Southwest, New Mexico, make sure to keep those feet in the water, those boots on the trail. And until next time, tight lines.